Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. Hey, hopefully everyone's doing well. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and share a little bit of some, some personal info with you guys. I am three months away from graduating, graduating with my executive MBA. I am thrilled. Love the program. Met some cool people. But uh, I want to get back to just bourbon. <laughs> Business is fun. Uh, all, all jokes aside, it's a huge accomplishment. I'm really looking forward to graduating. But uh, I also am looking forward to spending more time with everyone out there, with all you guys and gals. So a um, couple months away, right? A couple months away. So almost there. All right, folks. So last time we all got together, I had a chance. To, I brought in Cousin Nita. So I had her for a couple episodes. I know a lot of people out there love themselves some Cousin Anita as much as I love my cousin as well. She is hilarious and always cracks me up so I was kind of glad to bring her back a little bit which is fun. But uh, today let's go ahead and dive into this is uh, David Nicholson Reserve. Let me let you guys see that bottle. So David Nicholson Reserve. So this is a Lux Row product. But let's before you kind of get into that who is David Nicholson himself, right? Who's the man, the myth, the legend? Who is this gentleman? So the story goes back in um, in the 1840s, uh, David Nicholson was a, uh, a grocery store owner in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, right? So St. Louis, Missouri, he was a, a grocery store owner and uh, he actually created what, what was known as the 43 recipe for bourbon. What is that? Well, essentially what it is, is he put wheat into the mash bill uh, to kind of change it up, change it up a little bit. So when you think about this day and age, you know, so Luxro Distillery, they have a lot of different products. They have Blood Oath. They have Ezra Brooks. I reviewed both of those, by the way, on the channel. They have Old Ezra, seven, right? Eight, seven years. They have a lot of different products, but they also have David Nicholson. And they actually have two different versions of David Nicholson. So the first one is the white labels, and that's the white label also 100 proof bourbon. The key difference of that one versus this one, the white label, which is the David Nicholson 1843, hence the name, the 43 recipe, that one is the weeded bourbon. <laughs> this one, the black label, David Nicholson Reserve, uh, also comes in at 100 proof. The key difference though is that this one is a high rye mash bill, but the white label is a weeded bourbon. The black label, the reserve, is a high rye mash bill, so it's a bit spicier. I've had this in the past, by the way, but we'll see whether or not it's still as good as it was in the past. So this one is a high rye mash bill. This one comes in, uh, it's about a $35 bottle. I mean, for $35, it's relatively easy to find. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this bad boy. Ugh. Is relatively easy to find. I mean, you honestly, you may go to one, no more than two liquor stores to find this. I mean, literally, one, no more than two. If you can't find it in two liquor stores, you are going to the wrong liquor stores. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and pour this. Oh my gosh, goodness gracious, that's a deep pour. Well, it's been a long day, so why not? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very affordable. Um, you know, $35, bur $35 bottle of bourbon, I should say. And um, one other cool thing about this is that, so what's interesting is that, you know, so Luxro Distillery, the distillery itself actually opened back in 2018. Prior to that, they were sourcing all, and even up until now, they were sourcing a lot of their bourbon, what we believe, what everyone in the industry believes is through Heaven Hill. So what will be very interesting is that now, of course, they're producing their own bourbon, they're distilling their own, It'll be very interesting to see that as time goes on, obviously they're aging a lot of their bourbon. What will be very cool to see is hopefully in a few years as they start to kind of remove Heaven Hill from the picture and start to use their own distillate, how similar or different will it be? Also, I do wonder now that they're owned by MGP, that happened about six months ago, will that change anything? Will MGP produce any of, the, uh, any of their products for them? We don't know, we shall see, but uh, hopefully it'll have the same good quality that they've had in the past and uh, kind of go from there. All right, let's go ahead and get into this bad boy. All right, so to summarize this bad boy, $35, Luxro Distillery, High Ride Mash Bill, no exact age statement, right? We don't know the exact age, but very easy to find, very affordable. All right, let me get into those. Mm. All right, not bad, not bad. So, a couple of things I will say also is that um, you guys know me. Bourbon Judge needs three favors. Not one, not two, but three. Please do me a favor, hit the like button, 
drop me a comment and best of all please also make sure you hit the subscribe button love um well i said that kind of backwards i love going back and forth via the comments <laughs> but if you actually can subscribe you'll get the notifications whenever i do release content so please hook me up i really would appreciate it <laughs> oh man all right so from a no standpoint wow so this is like so it's interesting because it's like you don't have the exact age, but not knowing what the age is on this, it's extremely oaky, very oaky, very thick in the nose, like tons of like um, caramel. Mm, wow, the, the the oak is like just like hitting me. A little spicy, some pepper, maybe even like some notes in the background of like some cinnamon. Hmm, this is really interesting. It's been a while though since I've actually had this bottle. I haven't, I mean, gosh, I haven't had this in my collection literally maybe two years. I mean, it's been a minute. Yeah, maybe 18 months, maybe 18 months. It's been a minute though for sure. But very like spicy in the nose, very oak forward, some nutmeg, some cinnamon. Hmm. And just also very nutty as a whole. Not like Jim Beam nutty, where it's like almost like peanut butter, right? Mixed with bourbon. Not that bad. That's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> but like more like just like softer, gentle, like like nuts as a whole, right? Very like, you know, plain, almost like a nutmeg, but nut, very nut for it as well. All right. Well, I've nosed this the hell of it. I might as well go ahead and sip it, right? Hey, I say this each and every week. Peace, cheers, salute. I appreciate everyone out there. Thank you guys, gals, for all the love, all the support, all the commentary. Look forward to doing this, and I appreciate everything that you guys do for me as well. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Very. There's three things to stand out with this bourbon. Three things all day. Number one, tons of nuts in there, right? Very, it's a nut forward bourbon. Tons of oak and a nice good like balance of like almost like vanilla and caramel kind of folded in. But definitely very nutty, very uh, oaky. The finish is not super long. It's here, but it quickly kind of fades away. It's a hundred proof bourbon. But at $35, the question is, bourbon judge, is this a buy? Is it just leave it on the shelf and just kind of forget about it? Let me have one more sip before I make that judgment. <laughs> hmm. All right. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. I can't leave that in there. I'm sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now I feel better. Folks, for me, the judgment is in. This, it's a buy. I mean, we're talking about a $35 bourbon coming in at 100 proof. To me, this is like that quintessential bourbon that you can buy because you know it's a really good sipper if you're sipping it neat. It's also really good if you have it in a mixed drink, um, but it's a really good quality bourbon, right? at $35. Now let's just be clear. The finish was here and then it kind of slowly faded away, but it wasn't horrible. It's in the, in the palate, it's much more like a spicy nut and oak for it, which is great. The finish does fade away eventually, but at $35, this is pretty damn good, honestly. And let's just think about it, right? It's not Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's not a Stag Junior. It's not an old Carter or Forky, right? That's they're they're all in the league of their own. We all get that. But for thirty five dollars, for myself, for you, for a lot of us that's just looking for a really good daily sipper and one that you don't mind if someone even mixes, but it's a really good quality, especially if you love a little bit of oak and nut. This is a winner winner chicken dinner all day long, in my opinion, folks. Peace, cheers, salute. I appreciate everyone out there. Talk to you guys and gals soon. Later.